Well, guys, how's it going? <clears throat> uh, yeah, making slow progress. Uh, got the new harmonic dampener on, new bushings, new belts. I have to replace the uh, air conditioner pump. I have one, it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. Um, um, got my uh, weird caps, that's what they look like. They go on top of the valve, they just oop, sit on there, don't want to drop them while I'm showing you guys. <laughs> and you just sit on there and keep it from wearing that valve stem. So that's all that's about. So, all right, well. Been tinkering on it all day here. We've got quite a bit of rain again today. So, yeah, we're good on the moisture. So, <clears throat> I'll probably bring you guys back here in a little bit and uh, show you a little bit more of the progress. It's dang fly. It's terrible. That's, uh, <clears throat> that I'm doing, I guess. And, yeah, bring you back in a little bit. I got all the caps on. Tyler's over there wrenching on the M. <laughs> Wishing, he wasn't. Wishing he wasn't, yes. So, valves are set, caps are all on. <clears throat> uh, me and him just got the oil pan up. We just got to uh, get all the bolts in, get them all tightened up. Uh, injectors are in, need to be tightened. Um, yeah. Well, then next will be the flywheel. After the valve cover. Then probably intake exhaust. Not gonna put the valve cover on and let it actually, I'm gonna start it, run it, and readjust the valves and let it run for when I get that far. For. A few minutes and then readjust the valves and let her not let her get too warm, but just kind of it's been sitting open so long we didn't pull the lifters out or the cam, so it could be debris or something on them and just make sure everything probably have to readjust them a few hours down the road, too. So, <coughs> hands on, couplings on, yeah. So, that's the progress for the night. See what happens tomorrow. See how far he gets here. We got her back together last night too, so. Tyler, Tyler uh, thought the whole thing was gonna come tumbling down like Humpty Dumpty, but fortunately she didn't. <laughs> He's at pulling off the head and I'm at putting it back together, so. Kinda like John Stevens' shop. The old man's working on something and he's too. <laughs> That's kinda fun. <clears throat> All right. Well, we found the culprit in Tyler's, uh, there must have been a whole bunch of, uh, dust and crap that was on top of the cylinder, and she bottomed out on the head. Huh! <clears throat> That's why I was stuck. All right, well, we found the lemma. We need another new head gasket. Well, you gotta make sure everything's nice and clean before you put it back together. <laughs> All right, I didn't get as far as I wanted here today with the 4440, um, but I kind of wanted to, um, I don't know, just show you guys whatever. Some of you guys just don't know or never gonna have those experiences or see this or whatever, and some of you guys know all about it, which is fine. I don't know all of it. I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> I'm just a dumb dairy farmer 
trying to save some money and <clears throat> fix my own stuff. This was actually supposed to be fixed by my neighbor, which he just gave up on me and decided he didn't want to help me out anymore, which, what is that? What it, it is what it is, so I'm not uh, too upset about that. It's, it's, that's life. People change their minds and things change and things go on. But, okay, this is a power shift uh, 4440. All right, this power shift, they have a dry clutch. Well, it's, it's, as you see, it's a clutch plate. They call it a torque pack, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> if I can find it in the ding book here. Oh, I had it scoped out. <clears throat> well, whatever. I call it a torque pack. I oh, want to call it dampener. Okay, well, it's kind of the same. Under, under uh, saying is it, it, it lessens the jar from the motor to the transmission or from the transmission to the motor back and forth from the 8 speed power shift was a little jumpy if you didn't run it right some people hate them some people don't really care it was uh, uh, 8 speed power shift came out with the 20 series John Deere's and they with the 40 series John Deere's I like it. It's, the 16 speeds are even better, so whatever. But it runs it in a dry clutch. And this one has been spitting hydraulic oil because um, of these sleeves or uh, seals in here. I did not know, like I said, I'm not a mechanic. But I was talking to somebody that's a lot more educated at this than I am, John Stevens, and he's like, well, you're in there. Why don't you, you replace some seals? You replace your rear main seal while you're at it. Why don't you replace your seals in your power shift clutch? I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense. So, <laughs> I'm going to replace some seals when I get that far. So, I'm, like I said, dumb dairy farmer. Anyways, this is how this goes. It just has this dry clutch in there. <clears throat> and then uh, it's got a pressure plate, which is right here, which one part of your surface of your clutch sits on here, and then the other part of the surface clutch sits on here, and then there's springs hold the constant pressure, so there's no clutching, it's just always a constant a pressure, so it's basically like... It, it allows it to, you know, if there's a jar or some kind of whatever, it gives a little give in between. So that's what that's about. So that's what I'm putting back together here tonight. So I hope I kind of explain it in my scatterbrain way of doing it. <laughs> uh, new pilot bearings in. This is the old flywheel. I didn't do anything. I didn't resurface it. It didn't look bad to me. I just uh, kind of scoured it up a little bit with the <coughs> with the grinder a little bit. Yes, it has. There's some uh, light cracks. Nothing bad. This is I actually replaced this brand new in 13 when I did this last time, and then I put new springs. And I also <coughs> you can cheat a little bit if you want more pressure on this. I'll just call it torque back because that's what I got in my head. So you can put washers. Then it's not recommended, but that's you can do that to put a little more pressure on the spring. So all right. And then uh, I don't think I quite explained that good enough last night about what happened to the M. Apparently there must have been some. A lot <laughs> of crud that was in the manifold on the M. Um, I didn't think about we did this before we tip it upside down and Tyler cleans it all up. And uh, you figure anything that would be in there would drop out, but it must have been inside here more. We did not take this apart, 
because I told them, ah, we don't need to go that far. Don't try to mess with these bolts because exhaust manifold bolts can be <coughs> a pain in the rear end. So, anybody if that ever experienced that, they know. So, <coughs> anyways, what I think it was is a bunch of crud got in here. We're rolling around, cleaning it up. I helped them put the head on. We got the head on, we torqued it down, and uh, now we got it, you know, moving again. And then what I think happened is this stuff kind of settled back into the head, and then the valves opened up, and then they dropped in and filled the cylinders up full of dust and rust and crap. So, Tyler's got her all cleaned up. Now he's going to be impatiently waiting for a new head gas, which I'll have to wait till the work week to start to order it, and then we'll get a new head gasket. So, yeah, that's that. All right, I have really rambled on here long enough, and I'm going to put this together here and then call her a day. So, fans in, I think I had that in already yesterday. I got to get, I got to make myself a wrench for injectors, so... I don't have an injector wrench, but I'm going to make one, so you buy one for 100 to $150, or I'll just make one myself, so. All right, that's that. Get you all tomorrow. That's what it looks like put together, so not much to it. Um, I don't have a, oh, crying out loud, I can't think. <coughs> it's too late at night. <laughs> Pilot shaft, tool, what you call it. Um, I guess the best thing that I, what I do, do to do, what to do with it. Oh, dairy tree call. It's got one of these do him make him do hickeys. Jesus, I gotta go to bed. <coughs> it's called a feeler gauge. Yes, I know this is not exactly true, but what I just do is I just, if you look in there, she looks pretty true, don't it? So what I do is just run the feeler gauge around. I start working it out, get it to try to get it to, to the center, and then I just start adding the gauge and then uh, good as I can get it I guess that's kind of my redneck ingenuity <clears throat> I don't care who you are even if you have a tool you still fight that pilot shaft going into there so all right little tip on that take it or leave it I don't care but that's what I do so looks pretty even all the way around so and I can look straight into the bearing and guess I guess see it the way it I see it it looks pretty good so no matter what it's always kind of a fight you gotta wiggle and jiggle and turn the engine and you gotta go back together anybody that's put in a clutch knows that dilemma so they never just go it's kind of the poke and pray kind of a deal. <laughs> Sometimes the guy gets lucky. I'm just saying. So, all right, it's enough for the night. All right, well, I'm going to clean some parts up for 44, and I'm going to bring Tyler's uh, head outside here and uh, suck the air hose down on each side, and stuff came out, and then I uh, had the air hose, and that's what just came out of the exhaust port. I had the air blowing in here on this side and I pushed on the valve and opened the valve up and it just, I mean, all that crap just poured out. So pretty much that's what was, as soon as the valve started working, this stuff just started raining in and causing havoc. So. <coughs> all right, yeah, I'll show you that, that's. I can't believe much crap or rust come out of that manifold, but I guess, you know, I don't know how long it's been sitting, so. <clears throat> well, I figured they'd uh, come in here after, oh, was it last? Uh, 
Last Friday, we got an uh, inch and three quarters of rain. And looks like some of the stuff. It's not all going to sprout, but there's a bunch of it that's going to come. So it's the triticale and peas. See, some are just sprouting, some got a little growth to them. And it can be a lot, but hey, at least something kind of grew. So, I know one thing that I would have liked to do in this is to uh, seed it and then cultivated it. But this is the field, if you guys remember, that I had some corn that didn't uh, germinate. So. so, the rows are really screwed up, and it wouldn't have been worth it. So, this stuff here. Sorghum's or sorghum's uh, really shot up. Uh, it's just about waste, just about for my knee. I'll go up uh, up there and that way there and see if anything grew. I never did anything. I just said, "For hell with it, see what grows and what grows, it grows, it don't, it don't." So <clears throat> this stuff here, that rain really, rain really give everything a good shot. Woke up the hay and everything, so yeah. So maybe we'll get a decent third crop. Um, I've got a few more acres of hay I can pick up, buy out of the field. Been working on that. I lost the deal here today. I would say it was probably 20 acres, but he was he wanted a little bit more, and I really wanted to give them but it's probably gonna be worth it anyways but I didn't call them back right away and I was probably gonna buy buy it anyways but somebody else said they they said they wanted it so but I did find about 80 acres of fourth crop and new seeding I can get and then uh, some of you guys remember that farm I got kicked out of last year um, I can get uh, third crop off of that, so I kind of got to go hold of the new landowner, and they're like, "Yeah, sure, I don't need, <clears throat> don't need all of it." So she said she would sell a crop off there. So that's good. As Ty went out and looked at it a couple days ago, and it's got a little girl enough to do, but it's not going to be a lot of tonnage, but. Feeds, feeds, so everybody's last couple weeks here has gone crazy on buying up feeds, so yeah. I'll bring it back and get up. Well, it's looking better. You can uh, scope it out there. I can't, can't see the camera, real good, so, or the, but you can see it's coming. I mean, you can't even see where I'm pointing, but you can see <coughs> it was laying there yet. Needed another drink of water, so. And then there's some here that's just starting to come. There's some spots that just ain't nothing where I'm thinking it sprouted, it germinated, and then didn't have enough water to go. Um, yeah, but I think once she takes off, it it'll catch up with the rest. Uh, one thing nice about <coughs> sorghum is that it's a competitive, a competitive crop. So if its stuff is behind, it'll actually try to catch up with itself to straighten out. Yeah. So, well, I might get some feed up here, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. we give you an update on that. The uh, corn that I first planted, that came up good. It was tasseling. This field's so uneven, it was... Too much weed pressure and it's really uneven it's you can see it well you can see it better from the road it's so rolly and it's but it's catching up it's got decent color to it uh, finally definitely after we got that rain two weeks ago and then it took off so just one of those years it's everything's kind of been a challenge so 
but yeah well I got a little hay to chop and bring it back at that or just maybe bring it back here later night working on the 4440 who knows see what happens <laughs> Well, I figured to show you this one down here too. Just about chest high. <laughs> yeah, your stuff's really growing good. Second crop. Nice. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, I took that out. That, I'll show you that. Uh, not making a lot of progress, but it's, Trying to do the best I can. Chicken coops coming along too. Tyler's working on that. <laughs> All right, here is the uh, eight-speed power shift clutch. I'm tearing it down. <coughs> uh, there is a seal right tear. If you can see it, this this part here you're seeing that's that's an oil pump. So you want to know what that is. And these veins in here are the lifeblood of this clutch, how it works. Oil comes in through these ports here, in out pressures for when it shifts. Uh, I have to take this plate off yet. Just, just it, there's O rings uh, right there on this piece here. And they slip into this collar here. So <clears throat> I'm not uh, worried about this uh, clutch. This tractor always shifted nice, and the PTO clutch was strong. Uh, this is your power shift clutching here, and this is your PTO down here. So it runs through here. So it kind of has a shaft like a quad. This part, anyways. Of PTO and transmission. If anybody's, <coughs> uh, well, you'll see the quad, and I tear that apart too. So I got put clutch in it. I got I got parts for him, so he'll come in here as soon as this one gets done. Cause that one needs to repay me back for the time it's been sitting around. It's not the tractor's fault, but it's my fault and everybody else's fault, and not really, but <laughs> it's life, right? All right, so making a little progress. This is a heavy, heavy uh, some bitch. I can tell you that she's got a lot of, a lot of weight to her. A lot of, a lot of parts in there. A lot of clutch plates and packing and springs and so. <clears throat> this is the part that goes into your torque pack or whatever you want to say. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so this video has gone on long enough. I'll gonna work out a little bit here yet tonight. And, uh, yeah, it's a, someday I'm going to get at that. Some, someday, the old 1955, 60 John Deere. Yep, don't worry about it. Plenty of projects, never, never ending. <laughs> uh, still waiting on parts for Tyler's M. I ordered the head gaskets to deer. So hopefully he'll have it here in the next couple of days. Anywhere else, when you buy a head gasket, you have to buy a whole kit, so... It is what it is, but whatever. All right, rambled on here long enough. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, and uh, yeah, finding some hay. Feed's starting to become uh, everybody's concern around here now because uh, well, the weather's been not the greatest for everybody. It's been a dry year, so hopefully I can. <clears throat> round up enough to make it through another year and we'll see what happens so a heat farmer or not I don't know <laughs> I'd like to but we'll see what happens so well guys thanks for watching if you like the video and uh, we'll catch you in the next one see ya